Kia ora whanau. Oh, it's just amazing to see everybody. Ah, it is. Very special day today. Uh, Adam's already said, and Bruce has already said, we're celebrating 65 years. How does that happen? Where does that time go? Okay, 65 years. It's kind of important today that we get to understand a little of that 65-year journey and story, right? Otherwise, it's just 65 years. Oh, hum. Yeah. Some of you know the story. Bear with me for those of you who don't and that are visitors with us today. All good stories, I'm told, start with once upon a time. So... Once upon a time, there was an amazing lady mm -hmm. who prayed her non-believing, atheistic husband into the kingdom. Yeah? True story. She literally prayed and prayed him in. She tell, I think she told me at some point that when he didn't like her praying and he could see her, she would go into the the loo and pray in there. Okay, she prayed him in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're laughing because his name was Pastor Lou. It's all right. <laughs> that conversion started an amazing journey, the journey of my mum and dad, and that also became the, the journey and the story of new life. My mum and dad had an incredible hunger for God's word and to know and to fulfill God's uh, plan for their lives. They just lived and breathed to do that. In the beginning, as all good stories start also, they were attending a small church called the Star of Hope. That, to the best of my memory, was uh, somewhat open to the things of the spirit way back then. They started to get involved with some families because they were out to serve God. And they started a Sunday school. My dad would pick up a bunch of kids and take them to that church. There the kids would learn about Jesus. However, the increasing numbers of noisy, energetic children who left chewing gum under their seats um, and... <laughs> Yeah, they still do Rex. Um, they did not meet with approval. One morning, my dad turned up with his carload of kids to find the locks on the church changed, the locks on the doors. That day, Sunday school moved to our home. And here's giving away secrets. I was about three, three and a half, going on four years old. So, 65 years ago, the journey of new life began with a bunch of kids in our home, crowded into our lounge, learning about Jesus. That Sunday school was outgrowing our home, so mum and dad found another church that was also moving in the things of the spirit, and they joined forces, stage two of the journey. But let me... Pause and digress for just a moment. Okay. The Old Testament tells the story of another journey. The journey God's people, of God's people, their escape from slavery, and their journey to a new land. There was just one problem. They had no idea where that new land was. So... How did they get to know where to go? Exodus tells us that on that long journey, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to show them the way and by night in a pillar of fire. And he took not away the pillar of of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before his people. 
And Numbers tells us that whenever the cloud moved, they moved. Journeying toward a new land, I figure there must have been a 24-7 watch. Watchmen appointed to continually monitor that cloud. Hmm. And just when they got used to a new place, mm -hmm, a runner would be dispatched. He would go to the tent of Moses and he would burst in with the news, Moses, the cloud's moving. And the call would go out, probably a special trumpet signal. Pack your tents, the cloud's moving. And 300, 3 million plus people, probably closer to five, would pack up and start to move. Let's return to the story though. 65 years ago, the cloud moved, right? Hmm? The Sunday school in our home moved to join with the existing fellowship that was meeting in Victoria Street, the main street. It was in a large upstairs room. We, of course, called it the upper room. What else do you call in a room upstairs? But the cloud moved. The church moved to another building in what is now Anglesey Street. How do you transport people in church in a day when people didn't have cars and there was little public transport, especially on a Sunday? You buy a bus. Now, you won't be able to see that clearly, but that sign that's at the front of the bus, which says, I think in those days, open door for gospel centre, that was handwritten and painted by my mum. Mm -hmm. You do a round trip every Sunday in the bus, picking up the kids for Sunday school and for church. And you also have in your congregation a very special person called George, who volunteered with his van to also help with the pickups. We don't have a photo of him, but he stayed with us, helping out in multitude of ways for many years. Every church needs a George. Anyone here named George this morning? But the cloud moved. The pastor of, at that time moved to Timaru. What to do? Well, my dad just simply took early retirement and became the pastor instead. He formed link links with other pastors that at that time were pioneering and planting churches in New Zealand. And those churches became New Life Churches New Zealand, birthed out of revival that started in Canada and that found its way here to Aotearoa. But the cloud moved. Tired of the uncertainty of leasing, mum and dad and the church elders at that time decided to purchase a section in Te Araha Street, that's Claudelands. And they built a church, the first building program, with no money and a lot of miracles. That mortgage was somehow paid off. But the cloud moved. While still meeting in Te Araha Street, a church was planted in Wahararo reaching some of the Māori families in that community. We travelled there every Wednesday night to hold a service in the Marae Wharanui. I say we because I was too young to leave at home, so I had to go too. An old church building was purchased, there it is, and was actually moved from Narawahia to that site. And that became the place where we held all the meetings, but the cloud moved. There was a movement in the late 70s to start Christian schools, a response to the message in Isaiah, and all your children shall be taught, not by the state, but of the Lord. We were one of the first five new wave, non-mainstream Christian schools in New Zealand that was started in response to that challenge. 
how do you start a Christian school? No problem. You just pick up your church building and relocate it to a larger property. Somewhere there exists a photo of our building on a truck, but I couldn't locate that one. You use the building for a school during the week and a church at night and the weekends. Mm -hmm. You can see that um, from, I think there were two buildings originally on the property, the one we moved and an existing one, and that aerial photo now shows a multitude of buildings there. South City Christian School was birthed, still operates today. The mortgage incurred in that venture was also paid off, but the cloud moved. The name of our church changed a couple of times. Leadership changed from my dad and mum to Graham and myself. There we go. We sold the Christian school and that property in Collins Road to the Baptist Church. We leased a church building belonging to the Apostolic, which was located in Gray Street. And there, New Life Youth Church and New Life Funno Church were birthed. The family church met in the morning. 150 to 200 youth met at night, and the Funno Church met at the Fairfield College Marae. I think we might have a few ex-youth church people here today. Just a few, yes! <laughs> and another couple way down, at, down the back there, my daughter included. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ah, those were the days. I want to particularly acknowledge uh, Heather, hi Heather, and her late husband Glenn, who were part of that youth church leadership team at the time. And it was just so amazing. Uh, they influenced many, many, many youth. They served in Japan. They did lots of exciting things. They have so many stories. Yeah, just want to honour Heather. Thank you, Heather. But the cloud moved. After 15 years of pastoring, Graham and I passed the leadership mantle to Bruce and Jenny. Yay. Yeah. Graham and I pursued a journey with Empower Mission for a number of years. Bruce and Jenny followed the cloud to a number of temporary locations, Ham East, London Street, Rotatuna. Yeah. But the cloud kept moving. This time to 703. Yeah? Why will you drive? This property was purchased, this building erected in partnership with Lighthouse Christian Fellowship. Any Lighthouse people here today? I think there's a couple of you. Amazingly, the mortgage on this property has also been paid off. Three debts cleared, come on! God is good. Bruce and Jenny have their own cloud stories to share. During the 65-year journey, the values that Hamilton New Life Church has today were birthed. Our current church values that underpin our vision and our mission are diversity, empowerment, the kingdom of God, connectedness, and revealing God in all of life. They weren't just values we plucked out of thin air. They were birthed on the journey. Mm-hmm. Right at the beginning of the journey, the value of diversity was very evident. Three families and some kids that dad and mum engaged with and the children that attended that early, early Sunday school, they were Māori families, right? Mm. Yeah. Diversity remains as one of the distinguishing features of new life. Just look around. Yeah. Exciting. The kingdom of God value is at the heart of everything. Way back in, in I was a, just that young girl, there were miracles and deliverance that I saw 
We were the very first church to support the very first new life missionaries that went to India. Two couples. There we go. Now, the one on your right, Isabel, we stayed in her home. She mentored us when we went to India to visit. Our church sponsored Graham and I to go, and we went and worked with one of the India church plants just for a short time. Long enough to know we weren't called full time. <laughs> uh, Isabel passed away just very recently, uh, so we honour her today. Uh, they started churches in India that became New Life India, and that was a significant church movement. Hundreds and hundreds of people. Another cloud story. Kingdom truth was embraced. Prophetic, free praise and worship, gifts of the Spirit, they were all new truths back in the day. But they were embraced by my mum and dad. Sunday school was an outreach that continued for many years. Sunday school wasn't Sunday school at that time just for, for the kids of the families attending church. Sunday school was kids of families that didn't come into church. Okay. It was, it was more an outreach than anything. The kingdom of God at work at the heart of everything. And that continues. Just ask Bruce about the amazing stories of Vanuatu and the kingdom of God at work there. Empowerment was always a strong value. We were ascending church. People were empowered to go. Some of our youth became pastors and missionaries. The value of revealing God in all of life was the norm. Open air meetings every Sunday, out on the street. Mm -hmm. As a youth group, we just had lots of fun. We tried everything from drop-in coffee centres on a Saturday night, um, joining in the Jesus marches, you name it, we did it. We didn't know about connect groups so much in those days but there was just always a strong sense of connectedness, Bible studies prayer meetings, coffee groups my summer holidays were actually church camps that connected the whole church family together and drew them um, people from as far away as Auckland used to come to those my mum did the cooking that person, George, I mentioned, he did everything else. <laughs> Amazing stuff. So the values we hold today were birthed in the rich heritage of yesterday. But the cloud is still moving. His ministry church has been birthed. Our youth group is growing at a phenomenal rate. New leadership is developing, and you'll see some of them prayed in today. There's a vision for this property yet to be accomplished. Yeah. And I stand here today to say that 65 years on, the cloud is still moving. It's still moving. We are not, what are we celebrating today? That's a good question. Because we're not celebrating buildings. We're not celebrating patting ourselves on the back for longevity. We are not celebrating numbers on seats. We are not celebrating our programs. What God celebrates is whether we are impacting our communities. He wants to know what we're doing with what he gave us. He, what God celebrates is whether we are the solution to the problems around about us. He's not actually too interested in what happens inside here. He loves us together for worship so long as our worship leads to obedience and our obedience takes us into all the world to disciple the nations. 65 years on, the clouds still moving. That story, the story that began... 65 years ago, with Once Upon a Time, 
is not finished. It's not finished. The job is not yet done. There's still people to reach, still lives to impact. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day. He didn't take it away. The cloud's still here. There is still a cloud. The cloud of God's presence is still before us. And it's still moving. With the celebration of 65 years comes the challenge. And I leave it with you today. Keep following the cloud. Wow. That's quite a story. You could tell that story for hours, I reckon. But what I want to do before Esther leaves, where have you gone? Come back here. Please, 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 come back here. Come back here. Hey, look at these numbers on the stage. These are our decades. 60s, 70s, 80s. I want you to be thinking, when did you walk into the church? Because this is going to be important later on. Think, think, think. When did you, which decade would you identify with? Graham and Esther, would you come up here? I want to get all the first generation members up here. Now, first generation, we're going to go back from 1990, so we're going to do the first half. If this was a game, you know, first half, second half, or these are the first halfers. So everyone that came in from the beginning up to 1990, that first 32 years, please come to the front. Let's see how many first-time generation members we've got in the house today. Come on, you can clap better than that. They've been here a long time. Some of them are a bit deaf. Come on, they've got to hear you tonight. Wow. Doesn't it make you feel young? So uh, we've just heard from Esther, and I'm going to say Esther's the only one standing in the row that was the original, original, like the original. She stands out amongst all of us. But she caught this fella. She went fishing one day and found him. And he became the, the second pastor, the third generation pastor. We'd like to give you guys something here. This, can you stand? Oh, this is family. This is family in the middle. I'd, you've been getting in the middle. But lots. We would like to give you guys something as we honor you uh, for that long journey that you've been on. Who else have we got? So some of you were in the youth, youth church days. You're, you just stay right there. Some of you got born into the church because mum and dad were here. You know, probably the second longest, excuse my back, it's better than my front. Uh, some of the longest serving members in this row are standing right here. Well, yes, 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 yes. But the, I want to focus on this two, these two here. See, right now I think uh, Warren thinks he's the chairman, but this, this man here is the chairman. <laughs> he moves the chairs into place every single week. Uh, how many years have you been married? Colin, you'll have to answer this one. Oh, Rex knows. 58, 59 years. They had the first ever wedding in Tiaraha Street. Before they picked up the building, which was the biggest building that ever went across the bridges in Hamilton, our church, in, now in um, Collins Road, was once in Tiara Street. So Rex and Colleen, I, I just want to honour you guys. I mean, you've just been serving and serving 50 years plus. Come on, would you stand up with me today? These guys have been serving in the church. We'd like to give you something to say thank you for being there and all that you've done all these years. Don't we so appreciate their work and their effort? I know Roger and Winnie down this end joined us and we, we got busy with the Fano Church in the Fano days, that's some 30 plus years ago. Uh, but this is a, a look at the first generation church, uh, uh, members, all right? So let's th give them one more applause as they head back to their chairs. Thank you.
Oh, hang on, before you leave, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before you leave, I'm forgetting something because I've got my run sheet. We wanted to give you all a medal. That's right, we need to give you all a medal. Those that are doing that, sorry, I nearly missed it. Jenny will get me sorted. Here we go. Yes, please be seated while they all receive their medals. This is just like the Olympics, so here's a medal for you. <laughs> we should be raising our flag and playing our anthem about now, I think, but wow. All right, when you've done that, you may head back to your seats. God bless you all. Put one on Jenny's neck. Awesome. Beautiful moment of honour there. Can we give them all another round of applause, eh? That was beautiful. Love honouring. Some of us have only just been here five minutes, eh? But my goodness. Such a way to honour.